Hi and welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Math Revision video. In this video we're going to quickly revise exponential sequences. So identifying an exponential sequence. So sequences of numbers that follow a pattern of multiplying a fixed number from one term to the next are called exponential sequences. So here is an example. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. If we were to look, it definitely doesn't have a common first difference. So we check always our first difference and we say, well, we add two, then we add four, then we add eight, then we add 16. So it's not bad. And then we might try, well, maybe it's quadratic. Maybe it's a common second difference. So I add two, then I add four, then I add eight. We realize it's none of those things. So it is definitely not linear. It is definitely not um, quadratic. So we need to see, well, what else could it be doing? And the answer for us as well, it could be multiplying. So here, 2 is double to get to 4, and 4 is double to get to 8, and 8 is double to get to 16, and so on. So this is an exponential sequence, which is written as 2 to the power of n, where 2 is coming from the fact that to get from 2 to 4, I'm multiplying by 2. Multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2 multiplying by 2. This is now known as a common ratio as opposed to a difference. Difference is when we take two numbers away. This is instead talking about when we divide two numbers. So that 2 is our common ratio. So we simply use 2 to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 1 gives me 2. 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4. 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8. 2 to the power of 4 gives me 16. 2 to the power of 5 gives me 32 and so on. So now Let's see what kind of sequence, linear, quadratic, exponential, or none of these is given below. So let's see. First thing we're going to look at is, is the sequence arithmetic? So this is always our first check. So we say, okay, I'm adding two, then I'm adding six, then I'm adding, oh, it's a bit tight for space, 16. Okay, so straight away I know it's not linear, okay? Plus one, six, two. Okay, it's definitely not linear. So then I say, well, let's check the second differences. So I add four, and then I add ten, and then I add thirty-five plus one hundred eight. Okay, so I've checked, and it is not arithmetic. I've checked, it is not quadratic. So the next thing I do is I say, well, look. Could it then be instead an exponential? Is there something happening to these numbers in a multiplication sense? That means that how, what can I do to one to get to three? And the answer is, well, I could multiply by three. What about three to nine? Yeah, again, multiply by three. And suddenly I see this common ratio um, emerging. So this is based on the fact that it is a multiplication we would say that it is an exponential. Generally, we're going to check, is it arithmetic first? And when that doesn't work, we then check, well, is it quadratic? That doesn't work, we check, is it exponential? And the reasoning for that is because in the majority of cases at juniors at higher level, it will be arithmetic. Um, and if it's not arithmetic, it'll probably be quadratic. And it's rare to see an exponential, but it is part of your course and you could be asked to identify it. In this case, if we want to talk about the general um, term of this, we would take this common ratio, which is three. So Tn is equal to three, uh, but it's not to the power of n. And the reason it's not to the power of n is because that wouldn't work because three to the power of one would give me three. But if you look here, my first term is actually one. So I'd have to say, well, my second term is 3, so what I would have to do in this case is talk about this as 3 to the power of n minus 1, which would mean my first term is 3 to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 3 to the power of 0. And remembering back to our rules of indices, anything to the power of 0, and in this case 3 to the power of 0, is 1. But the 3, this common ratio, is still our big number or our base. 